Hey everybody, it's Digibro. I didn't get to be in the Kirby race because I was too busy traveling around the country doing a bunch of shit. And, um, I was like, you know, I was, uh, I was out there, man. I was seeing the world. And I, so I, so I couldn't be in the Kirby race, even though I love Kirby and I love doing the races. The PCP races are a lot of fun. Um, oh, oh, oh. PCP races are a lot of fun, and I love doing them, even though I always lose, um, because I never try very hard, because I don't practice, because I'm not competitive about things that I'm not already good at, um, nor really anything. I'm just, I'm not a, I'm not a contender, I guess, is what I'm saying. This is a weird control scheme, um, but you know, I was sad I missed out on Kirby. I mean, I would have gotten utterly destroyed by, by those guys, because I've never played Kirby Superstar before. This is the first time I'm playing it ever. Um, you know, I never had a Super Nintendo growing up, uh, I only, I only really got introduced to, like, Super Nintendo games in the last, uh, five years or so. Um, my, my friend Donson has a Super Nintendo that he, he gave to, uh, to my, to my family, and so, what the fuck am I doing? What is happening? Okay. Okay, he ate the thing. Yeah. Um... So yeah, I didn't I didn't have a, a Super Nintendo, and um, you know my first Kirby was Nightmare in Dreamland on the GBA. Uh, I, I played through I, I've played through the earliest Kirby games because I, I made a Kirby video a couple years ago, and I I, I was watching I played Kirby games for the sake of that video, um, and I've played little bits of some of the newer ones and some of the the DS and. Another point being, I never got around to this one, even though this is like the one that everybody says is the best. Like, especially the the remake on the DS, like, is often considered to be the best Kirby game. I don't know how much of that is just because there's multiple games. Like, I don't know if that's, like, the primary reason that everybody likes Kirby Superstar so much. Um, so, I, I think I might have played a little bit of the Great Cave Offensive once, um, for some reason. I don't remember why, but I, I think I probably played a little bit of Great Cave Offensive at some point. But uh, but I but I haven't played through much of it. I haven't played this level, um, so so I would have gotten my ass kicked. I mean, I because I definitely wouldn't have practiced. I maybe I would have played through once just so I could at least like know what I'm in for beside beyond the idea that it's a Kirby game. But um, the reason I'm playing it right now is simply that I am, I'm in my new house um, and my girlfriend had a Wii, so we went and kidnapped her Wii from her house um, so that we could play Kirby Epic Yarn. I'm probably not going to let's play that because I want to just play it, you know, I just want to play with my girlfriend and have a good time um, because it's a very relaxing game. I'd rather just play it to relax as opposed to trying to entertain an audience like what I'm doing right now with the constant dialogue. So, um, so, uh, I, you know, I, I hooked up her Wii just now, she's at, she's at work, and I was like, I, I'm gonna check out this Wii, I'm gonna have it hooked up and ready so that when we decide we wanna play Kirby, we'll have it right there available to us, you know? Um, and I turn on the Wii, and she happens to own Kirby Superstar just on the Wii, I guess as a, you know, probably a, a digital download, um, you know, she probably bought it off of the, the Nintendo store or something. Cause she liked the Kirby, and I liked the Kirby, so um, so yeah, that's why I'm playing it because I saw it there and I thought, oh, I didn't get to participate in the race, so I'll just make my own video where I do the race, you know, where, where I do the same levels they did, and we'll see how long it would have taken me had I been there. Cause that video was really short, and it, it's it's funny to think about, cause I think of the PCP race videos as like the biggest deal on the channel almost. Like they're the they have by far the most work put into them of anything that we do. Um, you know, the Dark Souls one had like a really epic presentation. It uh, had you know s several people had practiced for. Even I kind of practiced for that one, not as much as I obviously should have, considering that. Everyone else was able to beat like two fucking um, like like they were able to ring both bells in the time it took me to ring one, uh, but but nonetheless, um, I, I you know it, it it had a lot of effort put into it uh, as a, as a video and um, the Pokemon one did as well. And I mean Ben and Nate trained so ridiculously hard for the Pokemon race. It was unbelievable. They spent like a month just non-stop doing runs and shit, like, 
they fucking practice their asses off. And the the result of that is you get this very satisfying video of, like, us not only competing with one another, but sharing our strategies and, like, shit-talking and all this stuff that goes into it. Um, and I really think that the the fact that each of them is 40 minutes was a good thing, because, like, 40 minutes is a good chunk. You feel like you got this big, satisfying video, this, like, yeah, I, I had a... I had a fun time, you know, it was a, it was a fucking, it was a whole experience. You get time to decompress after the, the credits roll on the, on the guy who won, you know. So the funny thing about that is when the Kirby race came out and it was only 20 minutes, it hit me immediately, oh yeah, if everyone does well, then there's no reason it would take 40 minutes. There's no reason that we'd have this longer... Um, you know, video where we get to commentate on everything and, like, really let it sink in, like, who won and who lost and everything if we straight up, um, have someone who takes forever. So, even though everyone makes fun of me for my performance in those and I don't try that hard and, uh, you know, I, I suck and I bring down the level of play, I think... I actually make an important contribution to these uh, videos in that I allow them to be long enough for, you know, the winner to brag and share his strats and, like, for everyone to, to fucking cry. I mean, the Pokemon race was fucking legendary. And even the way I lost was legendary because I lost in such a spectacularly over-the-top fashion such as not actually finishing the fucking game um, or the run that we were supposed to do. Whoa, that was cool. So... So yeah, I uh, I figured, why not? Why not give it a shot? See how long the video would have been had I actually competed. Had I, uh, had I given it a go, would it have been a 40 minute video as opposed to a mere 20? I fucking just died to a random flower. Like certainly nobody, di like I'm the only person who would have died and <laughs> left it in my run. That would have probably happened. That didn't break all the blocks, okay? I hope that would break all the blocks. Why would they put that power right there? Oh god, that's obnoxious. Is that just to troll me? Well, I used it all up. Great. Now I don't even have anything. And I can't eat this guy. And he responds every time I go up. Ah! Give me your bombs. So yeah, we're gonna learn that today. You gonna learn- Oh! Oh, what did I do? What did I even do? Oh god. <laughs> this I probably would have actually reset my run if it was if I uh, you know, if I lost this badly. Did I re did I die in the Dark Souls run and keep going? I don't remember if I I think I might have died once at least. Oh my god. Oh, this is this is a shameful display at this point. Honestly, a lot of what's fucking me up right now is the controls, because I'm playing this with a GameCube controller on an actual Wii, and um, the B button is jump, and the uh, Y button is absorb slash use power. The A button is not used for anything. So this is a very bizarre control scheme for Kirby, if I do say so myself. Oh god. So obviously I'm not going to be able to actually talk strategy or anything here since I'm not using any strategy. I am just attempting to beat the fucking level. So instead I'll talk about other stuff that's going on with me. You know, I've been um I've been trying to I've been getting back into the human content machine swing uh, over the past week because you know, before I left on this this cross country trip I had made this big deal about the fact that, like, I make ass tons of content and that's all I do. And, like, you know, that it felt like my subscriber base no longer really cared that much about an anime analysis videos compared to just, like, watching me do shit. Like, particularly the kind of people who patron me are, like, often the ones who will just watch, like, all of my content regardless of what it is. So, um, I thought it was starting to seem weird to, like to have my Patreon dedicated to just one type of video when I make so many different types and it was so hard to justify other types of videos um, when they don't make money, you know? So why not change up the formula? 
um, and embrace this idea of me as like a guy who just puts out all kinds of shit all the time. Not that I wanted to get rid of anime analysis videos or anything, you know, I still want to do those, especially because Davu's employment kind of depends on it. Um, but like, they wouldn't be the sole focus. It would be more about like putting out tons and tons of unique stuff, all of it like totally different, you know. See how many different ways I can make a vlog or let's play or, um, or, uh, uh, what's the other podcast like th those those are my basic my skills my like th the things I like to do and am good at is like vlogging podcasting and uh, Podcast let's plays. I mean this is really just a podcast But like with a video game involved because I suck at video games and I rarely am the one playing them when we do them um, God fucking damn oh What was that that was a fucking sick move? See, this is the this is the shit you miss out on when I'm not there for the race. You miss out on someone just like getting their ass utterly reamed. Like there's, I don't know. There's there's nothing all that funny about watching three guys be almost just as good as each other. You know, like uh, granted they didn't put as much effort into the Kirby race as as like particularly Nate. You know, he usually goes all out. Um, he didn't have time. He was busy with me and Mafava and all that. Um, because that that's how long that's how far ahead we plan these. They're usually like. The, the idea is probably, like, months ahead of when the video comes out. But, um, you know, I'm sure he was busy with all kinds of things. This is a fucking hard boss. I really should just get the rock power, because that does the most damage. It's just harder to use. Um, but, but anyways, yeah, like, you know, I missed out. I missed that, that feeling of, like, the, the huge fjord of difference between, like, what it means to play skillfully or not. Like, seeing the way that Nate handled the Dark Souls race, and, like, the giant difference between that and what, like, uh, you know, how Hippo was able to do it just by being, like, insanely good at Dark Souls. And Jesse was, like, you know, ahead of me because he's still way, he's still good at Dark Souls, you know. He used a little bit less tech. Than, um, than Hippo did, and then me, who uses no tech, and it's just like, and it's not even that I'm, like, terrible at Dark Souls. I did fine as, like, a casual player, um, you know, someone who's played through the, the Souls series a bit, but, like, not, you know, nearly on the skill level of someone who has continually played the games more than once, as those guys had, uh, you know, or watching Ben just, like, utterly fucking wreck Pokemon, because... Ben is a master, a Pokemon master, you know, and Ben's just generally great at video games. Um, he is, he is, I can't, I don't even have, like, the dexterity to do a lot of the things you have to do in a lot of, like, challenge runs, you know? Like, I wouldn't be able to probably do the mixing that you're supposed to do for the, um, for the, like, speed run of this game. I wouldn't probably be able to do a lot of shit, so... You know, I just, I don't have the tech. I don't have the abilities. I just had to use a continue on this fucking, on this fucking thing. That's how bad I am. Um, rock power seemed not great for this. Bomb seems better. So, um, yeah, like, it, it, it's, it's about seeing that difference in skill. I think it's really interesting. But what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Uh, before I got sidetracked by talking about video games again, um, Okay, I think I just beat the first game. I think I just beat the first, like, part of this. And then I have to... Yeah, okay. Spring Breeze is done. Next, I gotta do Dyna Bird. Or Dyna Blade, whatever the hell it's called. Uh, yeah, fuck yeah, let's do it. Oh, god damn it, I asked it to explain copy. I don't need this. Okay. So, anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, I, I, I uh... I, I've changed everything so that it's more about, like, frequency of content and and diversity. Like, it's not just about the fact that it's hyper-frequent, but also just that I can do all kinds of different things and really play around and experiment and, like, see what's fun and what I like doing. Like, right now, it's like I've got a series going where it's, like, me and my girlfriend raiding Pokemon designs, you know? Which I think is, like a genius idea because it's such a weird form of content like it's not something that anybody would have seen coming and yet makes sense and it's like it's kind of the most digi bro thing imaginable because i love making lists i love scoring things in relationship to one another you know and just like passing judgment and uh, and having an opinion about things and I also love, like, Pokemon, and, like, I've literally done it before. Like, I did it just 
out of uh, just <laughs> what what even what I consider the reason I did it before. Like I had just played through Pokemon X and Y, and I, I think it was because I liked the designs in X and Y so much, and I felt like they needed defending because you know not everybody's a huge fan of the designs of newer Pokemon, and I really liked the X and Y designs. I felt like they were stronger even than some of the you know the classic gens and shit like that, and so. Yeah, I put together this this series of charts, just like ranking all the Pokemon designs, and I just posted it on Tumblr. Like, it had no purpose to anybody but me. I probably did it all in like a night. And so, like, I think I just mentioned to May that I'd done that before, and she was like, that would make a good video series. And I was like, oh my god, what have you done? <laughs> like, you realize that I now have to do that. And like, I told her, like, you know, if I do that, it's gonna take forever. Like, if I if I make a, a series of videos, it's gonna be hours for each one. You should be in them, too, because you also love Pokemon and can do the ratings, and, um, and it'll also be a fun way to introduce my audience to you, because, like, you know, I've put her in a couple videos, but she didn't have much to say, really, because it's, like, subjects that she's kind of new to. Like, talking about anime history, that's my bag, you know? I can go on all day. But she can talk about some fucking Pokemon. She's a Pokemon lifer like myself. So I was like, okay, this will work. And and she's also... Uh, I, don't, I don't know, I feel like I'm just talking about my girlfriend now. But, like, because she's a, a fashion person and stuff, like, um... She's into design, so I figured she'd be able to talk about Pokemon designs. Anyway, that's the, the concept of why the video happened. But, like... Yeah, it's a very distinctly, like, this is a thing that could only happen on the Digibro channel. And, yeah, it's not going to appeal to everybody, but there's, a, you know, there's certain people who are like, oh, this is my favorite thing on YouTube right now, you know? Like, there's, oh, what the fuck happened? Oh, get me out! Let me out! That was horrifying, I didn't know they could do that. Um, anyway, yeah, there's some people who, like, legitimately love it and are like, oh, this is so much fun, I love doing this, you know? People who are playing along, people who are charting out all the scores and stuff like that, which is, you know, I knew all that would happen. I was like, this is, this is, that's the kind of idea this is. Like, if you are into this idea, you're gonna be way into it and want to join in and, like, play along, because it's a very inviting kind of, uh, setup. So, you know... And the idea is that, like, because all the content is so different, there has to be a shitload of it, because if any one person, like, doesn't, like, let's say you're a patron for $20 a month, and you don't even like Pokemon, you know? And so, if my content for the next week is just seven hours, or, well, more than seven hours, probably close to ten hours that it will be in total of me ranking Pokemon designs, then you're gonna be like, this is fucking boring. Like, I have no interest in this, this is not my kind of content, and why am I paying for it, you know? So, like, even though the content is long and voluminous, there still has to be something else for those who won't be interested. So then it's like, well, there will also be all these different kinds of podcasts. Some people won't like Insufferable Social Media Argument, the podcast, but some people think it's the funniest shit in the universe. Some people won't care to watch a weekly anime or, you know, me and Nate comment on one, like, uh, you know, Made in Abyss every week, but it's gonna be there for those who do. Oh, you only like three-minute videos? You don't like it when I go on all day? Well, here's uh, the most interesting thing about series, you know? And, like... I still want to make, like, stuff that's more universal, that everyone can appreciate, and, like, but even then, there really is nothing like that anymore. Like, there's some people who have a conception that there is. Like, the people who do like those kinds of videos, I get comments from them sometimes, they're like, Digi, why aren't you making, like, good videos anymore? Like, what happened to just stuff that's more universal? And I'm like, well, you might think it's universal, but, like... When it comes to my patrons, a lot of them don't care about that stuff at all. Like, I'm shocked how often I get comments that are like, I literally don't care about anime. I just watch you, you know? Fucking Munchie. Munchie, who's one of my biggest fans, who's seen, like, every video I've ever made, does not give a single fuck about anime. He just watches my videos because I make them. So, like, you know, it's... It's, it's really difficult to, like, piece together what is the kind of video I can make that will satisfy everybody. There really is none. It has to be constant content. It has to be stuff all the time. And I'm okay with that, because I like making videos constantly, you know? The only worry, the only, like, ennui is wondering, you know, who's gonna stick around for all of it. Like, there's gotta be some people who are gonna be mad when this or that one thing doesn't come out. And that's why I'd like to have lots of regular, like, more regular content, because then people at least know they'll get this thing. Like, 
even if my one-off series, like something like the Pokemon thing, you know, that's only going to last a week and then or eight days, however long it takes to go through all the gens, um, and then it'll be over. But like, if we, if me and Nate keep doing like, you know, uh, anime every week and stuff like that, or if I keep doing insufferable social media argument and uh, the pub crawl and like these shows that at least you know you're going to get, so. Um, you know, even if the 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 new stuff that comes about isn't something you're interested in, at least if you're interested in one of those other shows, you will get it, you know? And there's some people who will just consume all of it. They don't care what it is, and, like, those people... <laughs> I, I feel bad that I release so much because it's, like, impossible to keep up with, but, like, you know, for those who can they are going to have the best time of all. And that's what a lot of the patrons are, is people who just watch all of it, and they don't give a fuck what it is. They just like me, and, you know, hearing me talk and uh, being interested in my personality and perspective, I guess. So, the result of all that is just this increased wariness about getting into, like, bigger projects. Like, one of the things I was glad this would free me up for is, like, hey, I'll have time that I can set aside for a, a, a bigger project, but then at the same time, um, maybe people don't even want to see those, you know? Like, some people won't care about, like, if I spent all month on a big project, there then the people who don't care about it are gonna be just as put off as, you know, um, as the people who do care about it are when I make a bunch of small stuff. Not that that's, I mean, it, not that that would stop me if I had a big project I like super wanted to do and I have one that's that I have in mind that I might start soon that I think people will appreciate I don't know what I was doing wrong there but um you know it, it's just put me in an interesting position where I really have to rethink the way I do stuff and I really um I feel like I'm gonna change the nature of like a lot of things like for instance even the anime analysis videos like um, I can do them without, uh, like, requiring the things that I've acted like I required all the time. Like, for instance, um, net, like, I can talk about shows that maybe I am not doing, like, because I'm not doing, like, an analysis video on the show, I don't have to watch the whole thing. I can just, like, talk about it. Um, maybe I don't have to script all of them, you know, stuff that, stuff that allows them to fall in better with this constant content model. Where, like... Right now, it's like, most of the stuff I make is hour-long uh, videos, or like, the only 10-minute vlogs I do are like, random concept shit, but it's never about anime. I'm never doing like, an unscripted or like, lower effort version of what I was doing all this time. Um, and as a result, it's harder to fit what I was doing all this time into this new model. But I think there's probably ways to do that, you know? So, for instance, I have this idea for a video that I'm pl I am was planning to write today. In fact, I should be working on it right now, but instead I'm playing Kirby. And, um, like, I just haven't gotten around to writing it because I keep wanting to fill my time with different podcasts and vlogs and stuff like that and scheduling around um, when my girlfriend's at work because I've been picking her up and uh, dropping her off at work. So there's, like, a period of time of like a few hours each day where it's like all to myself that I can work on personal projects and I don't have any obligation to drive anywhere, you know, for a little while. Um, and so during that time, I try to get as much done as I can. And um, so this is, I'm in that time right now and I should be writing this video that I've got this idea for, um, that, that was going to be another, a broader concept one. And basically, I was like, well, the only real thing stopping me is that I have to write this. Like, that, that the idea of sitting down to write it. Because it, it's not a complicated video to write. I, I know exactly what I want to say. I know exactly how it's going to go. Um, you know, it, it's not a difficult script, but, like, finding the, the exact moment to sit down and, like, concentrate all my power into writing as opposed to watching a YouTube video or doing a podcast or, you know, uh, if my girlfriend's around, like, doing stuff with her, like, to do a writing as opposed to that is, uh, is where I struggle. But then I thought about it when I was, uh, on the way home, and I was like, wait a minute, this doesn't need to be written at all. Like, this is not something, it's not struck, the video is not structured in such a way that, like, it requires, um, 
that it requires actual, like, pen to paper, well, hands to keyboard. I'm fucking this up horribly. It doesn't require actual writing. Like, I know what I'm gonna say. I can literally just say it into a microphone and then, you know, edit it together and send that to Davu to edit as opposed to writing out a script. And like, if I really want there to be a scripted version, I can transcribe it later. But like, it'll go faster if I just fucking deliver it. And I can do that because I know how to speak unscripted. I've been doing it for the last 20 or 30 minutes, however the fuck long I've been playing this game. You know, I, I add in a lot more you knows and ums and shit and likes when I'm talking unscripted, but if I concentrate and formulate each sentence as opposed to trying to talk in one gigantic unbroken stream of consciousness as I am right now, with literally no pauses, which is extremely difficult, um, then I can actually think about each sentence. And I've done some good work this way already. Some stuff that people barely even seem to realize is unscripted. Like, I got no complaints on the lo-fi hip-hop video about it being unscripted. I didn't even get a lot of complaints about it having no video. It was just an audio-only, um, you know, explanation thing that a lot of people really appreciated. It got pretty good views, it got, uh, it was well-liked, um, people were interested in the subject matter, so that's what really matters here. Like, having a script, especially if I literally can do it just as well without one, is not necessary. And it's, if anything, just slowing down my process. It's kind of like, I feel like I've reached the level, um, as a talker, that an artist reaches where they don't have to do, uh, sketches anymore. You know? Like, there's a level you can get to as an artist where you literally just don't have to sketch things out because you know what you're doing, you know? Like, you probably would if you were doing, like, a really big thing, but, like, you c you can draw competently without it. Um, Munchie was commenting on this, um, cause he, Munchie, uh, was at Anime Expo with me, and we went to this Trigger live drawing panel, where, uh, Yo Yoshinari and a couple of the animators and, uh, like, you know, guys who work for Trigger, we're, um, we're doing live illustrations of, like, some of their characters and shit. And Munchie had showed up with a notebook because he was planning to literally take notes on their techniques and, like, learn how to, you know, to draw better. But the thing is, all of them just, like, went and just drew. Like, they just did a final draft in one go. There was no, there was no sketching, there was no, like, anything, like... Um, Yo Yoshinari himself was doing it in like a painter style where like he would just lay down layers uh, Layers on layers and just a picture would form out of it You know like it would start off looking kind of like nothing and then eventually it would be fucking beautiful Because um, he just knew where he wanted things to go and uh, you know the other guys just went right to line art and shit and just spent most of the time adding in detail as opposed to the initial drawing because it was a two-hour panel so it went on for uh, forever and, yeah, like, it was, it was interesting, and I feel like I'm at that point, because writing is literally the same thing as speaking. It's just, you put more thought into what words you use. When you're speaking, you're writing in fast forward. You're just writing as fast as you can, as fast as the words can come to mind. But the actual practice is not very different, at least not from the way I write, you know? I'm not writing fucking, uh, prosaically. I'm not having to fucking, like, think of a phrase that perfectly encapsulates an emotion so much as I am just describing, uh, you know, facts or, or like, uh, you know, just getting the point across, uh, without any sort of artistic, um, addition. There's nothing I'm, I'm putting on top of it. It's just how well can I phrase this thing in the moment that you'll get the point. But I don't sit there and, like, craft sentences and shit like that, you know? I mostly just write straightforwardly. So for me, writing and talking are basically the exact same activity. And so it's, um... Yeah, it's interesting to think that... I don't necessarily have to write things down if I can just take the time. Like, like rather than spending 15 seconds thinking about how to write this sentence and then later recording myself reading that sentence back, I can just spend 15 seconds thinking about how to write the sentence and then just say it into a microphone. You know, like there doesn't have to be a writing step in there. 
Um, whoa, what the fuck does this do? Whoa. I literally don't know what this does. Oh. Did I just... Did it give me his power? Is that what it does? Okay. Um, let's just get the fuck out of this fucking stage. Nope, I fucked up. I used the power. Nope, and I didn't even do it. I thought I had, and I hadn't. And now I wasted it. Well, good for me. Um, yeah, anyway. Point being that I can do it a lot faster, and I'd like to. I'd like to, um, I really want to introduce, like, a mid-level of content where it's, like, so I've got the, um, you know, the most interesting thing about series, and that is kind of almost mid-level, except that the point of it is that it's, like, super simplistic. It's, like, literally just the most obvious thing about a show that I don't have anything else to say about, you know, and, um, and, like, just something I thought was interesting and wanted to talk about, but there was nothing else to say about the show, so let's just, like, get that one idea out there and, uh, and, you know, send it along. And those, like, have been written just because, like, it's so short that I can write it in half an hour and there's no reason not to. But, like, I do think there's a, a mid-level of content where it's, like, it's not something that's, that massively needs to be worded well. Like, I could never have unscripted done the asterisk or sucks, right? Because it has to be, like, processed while watching the show. It's something that I have to, like, pick out the words through the experience of literally watching it and, um, you know, coming up with ideas and all that. Like, it's a very laborious writing, uh, writing process. But if I'm just, like, explaining something that's, like, uh, yeah, um, here's how this show, uh, affected something historically or some shit like that, you know? That's basically what this video I'm, I'm working on is. Like, again, I literally already know what I'm gonna say. So, like, there's no reason to even bother writing it down. I know where it's going, so, um, I will not write it. As soon as I'm done with this, uh, this Let's Play, which is taking longer than I expected, simply because, of course, watching those guys play through these two levels made it look really short and really simple and easy. Um, and to a lot of people, it is exactly those things. But for me, I did not know what I was getting myself into. I've never played the game. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Um, so it's taking quite a while. I don't know exactly how long I've been going, but I've, I've got to imagine it's like 40 minutes. I mean, what it always is. I always take 40 minutes on these. Like, the deliberate goal when we choose a challenge is that it can't take more than, like, 25 minutes to do, like, your first time, you know? Because if it's something that takes longer to do, uh, you know, on the speed run, then it will, uh, It'll, it'll take too long to practice, because if you're doing it like Ben and Nadar, where they literally practice like 50 to 100 times, uh, if not more, then yeah, if it's fucking, if it's a 40 minute practice session and they have to do it 50 to 100 times, it's gonna take a fucking long time. Whereas what they're really doing is finding ones that are like, that like, will probably take them 20 minutes the first couple of times and then 12 minutes each time after that and they're really just shaving seconds off you know they're just trying to sh to get like the optimal time they're like literally speed running whereas with me i'm like <laughs> just doing it once and like sticking with whatever it would naturally take me with no practice which um you know i don't know why but i find that interesting in itself like to, to just to just display what the uh what, what it would be if you didn't try uh, to, to, like, become a master. Like, to me, the point of the Dark Souls race was just to show who was best at Dark Souls at that moment. You know, like, if, if, the, if the competition had been who is the most skilled Dark Souls player, then Hippo would have won because he's better at Dark Souls than Nate. But the reason Nate won is because he used strategies, you know, he... he he, he, he was the best at doing that challenge. He was the best at going as fast as you can to beat that boss. And I understand why that is more interesting to him. Like, I'm not saying that he's wrong to think that way. I completely get it. But to me, it, like, I had thought the idea was, like, let's see who's the best at Dark Souls, you know? Like, let's see who can, 
who can play the game the most good. And um, that's not really what the competition was or ever is, but, um, you know, someone's representing that angle on it. So anyways, yeah, there we go. I beat Dynabird, Dynablade, whatever the hell it's called. Um, you know, I'll put my time on screen. I'm not sure where the t I'll, I'll have to look at the video to see where the timer exactly begins and ends, but um, you'll be able to see my time. So you can compare it to everybody else. This is the digi-only commentary version of a... I realize it, you know, and th this is the difference between if it was just me versus if I'm in attendance. Is that if it, if I had been in attendance, you would have gotten the stuff I was talking about for the first 15 minutes and the stuff I've talked about for the last five minutes. And all of the midsection where I just rambled about what's going on in my personal life <laughs> would have been cut out because it's completely unnecessary to one of these. But, you know, I was, uh, it was a one man let's play. Um, that ran long, so there had to be some content filler in there. I apologize to those who 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 didn't who weren't who didn't sign up for that shit. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next one.